So January 2004 and the South African Open, the 2003 edition, arrived at Erinvale for the second year. And Erinvale is right next to Lawrencewood. So I was very fortunate early mornings I'd slip through the gate because they had some overflow parking at, at Lawrenceford. And I'd go and photograph. I mean, I saw Colin Montgomery one morning early at the, at the practice range. Uh, he didn't greet me. We were the only two on the practice range, myself, him and his caddy. Uh, yeah, but anyway, uh, it was amazing for me to be in touch with all these top, top golfers. But I was one of the biggest fans of Trevor Ammelman, who just won it the previous year. And he was the hot favorite again to win it for the second time. Um, so, yeah, arrived at the first tee, waited for Trevor. And as Trevor got ready to tee off, his caddy spotted me and uh, he said to me, sorry, no cameras. I just had the Fuji Fine Picks, a very silly camera, didn't even make a noise. Anyway, the security came and they took me away and, you know, as fortune had it, uh, Stein Momberg saw me. He was one of the organizers of the tournament and he said to me, where are you going? I said, well, these guys don't want me to take photographs. He says, rubbish, man, come with me. He gave me a media armband and accreditation and my wife said to me, you got to go back and photograph Trevor Ammerman. So when I got back there, I think it was the second tee, his caddy said to me again, put away your camera. But I just showed him my armband and said, I've got accreditation. And then he said to me, with that camera. And I felt really embarrassed. Everybody laughed and I, I kept on. I took some nice pictures. And uh, Trevor went on to win it. And I photographed him with a trophy and some got some incredible shots. I met Grant Laversha, who was working for S South African Golf. He was very kind to me. Uh, took me around, said I must stay with him and showed me where to stand and how to take pictures. So Grant, what an awesome guy. Um, afterwards, I met Trevor's dad, Johanna Mulman, who later became one of my mentors while I was doing my MBA. And he was very kind to me, uh, gave him one of the photographs that I took and Trevor s signed it and he said to me, taste, live your dreams, which has always been something special to me. So turned something really bad into a very positive uh, positive thing. Soon after that, I got phoned by Trevor's dad and he said to me, Trevor's holding a training camp or a, a educational camp for some youngsters at Arabella. Why don't I come around and take photographs? So again, very close, worked closely with Trevor. Got some incredible shots. I mean, just amazing to see these guys hit the golf ball and to be able to photograph it was special. And then soon after that, there was the Gary Player Invitational also at Arabella. And again, I was fortunate to walk with Trevor and Gary Player. I mean, South Africa's all-time great sportsman, one of the greatest golfers that ever lived. And I got to chat to them and, you know, just got really close to them and took some incredible pictures. And guys like Joost van der Westhuizen, who I'd never met before, I met him on the golf course, Retief Huysen. And all these guys, uh, just incredible sportsmen who also all love to play golf. And that type of golf photography set me up to do some incredible stuff. Uh, got contacted by Francois Pina's team, the Make a Difference Foundation, not too long after that. And they asked me if I can do some golf photography. And yeah, if you can show pictures of Gary Play and Trevor Ammelman and top guys like that, then you get the gig. So for years later, for many years, I kept on doing the Francois Pina Golf Days, the Make a Difference Foundation. And through that, I also got to climb Kilimanjaro. But also one of the things that golf also set me up for is not, not too long after the South African Open, I met uh, Annie Lawson, who did all Ernie Els's uh, events. And I managed to work with Ernie Els on one of the South African Opens at Fancourt, where Retief Horsen chipped in on the 17th and beat, I think he beat Ernie by one stroke. I did a couple of Ernie Els autism days where I met guys like Rory McElroy and uh, Darren Clark and all these amazing golfers. So, uh, but maybe I'll keep that for another video because there's plenty to tell. Thanks for tuning in. See you again.